Hey, welcome to our weekly Rhythms Bible Study here at Olive Baptist Church. Uh, my name is John Dubois, and I'm glad to be able to be with you today. Uh, we've been talking recently in the last few uh, videos about uh, living intentionally as a, as a Christian, letting Christ uh, not only be the, the Lord of our life, but, but we're intentional. And we've discovered through Scripture, uh, especially in Acts 15, that uh, intentional Christians um, are earmarked by a, by a few things. Real quickly, encouraging. Intentional Christians like to encourage other people with their kindness, with their words of affirmation. They also know what their spiritual gift is and they serve. They serve the body of Christ. And then maybe the most important one is that they make disciples. They, they know how important it was for Jesus to invest in, in people when he was here on the earth. And they also invest in people. Uh, call that disciple making. Call that mentoring. It's, it's pouring your life, investing your life into somebody who will do that with somebody else. And it, and it creates, a, it creates a, 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 a spirit of multiplication. But you know, as Christians, if you're like me, there are times when you and I, we go through periods of discouragement, don't we? We, we get distracted and, and, and sometimes we let things uh, block or, or impede uh, our desire or our ability to be intentional for Jesus. And the other day, uh, I was brushing my teeth in my, in my bathroom and I, I, I was running the water and, and I spit into the sink and I realized that the water level in the sink wasn't going down like it's supposed to, right? And so I'm thinking, oh man, my sink is clogged up. So you know what I did? I, I, I grabbed my plunger, you know, the plumber's best helper, right? The best friend of the plumber. And I started plunging that sink. And before you know it, after a couple of plunges, I could see that gunk, right? That hair, that, that stuff that clogs your drain. And it started coming up and I, and I was able to get that clog uh, uh, out of there and throw out that, that, that gunk. Now, what do you do if the plunger doesn't work, right? Well, then you've got to go to the, you have to go to the X factor in plumbing, Drano, right? And you got to go down to the store and buy that Drano. And it's kind of a weird deal, but you pour it in the, you pour it in the sink and you let it sit for like an hour, hour and a half. And before you know it, man, that Drano kicks that clog out, gets that hair out of there and, that, and, that, and those pipes are, are, are running smoothly. Um, a lot of times... As you and I walk with Jesus, our spiritual life gets gunked up. It, it gets clogged up. But it's not that hair and that gunk that clogs us up, is it? No, you know what it is? It's, it, it's, our, it's, our, it's our own inability to keep our eyes on Christ. And you know what happens? Selfish desires begin to creep in. Um, when you start thinking about things and you say, you know, it's really... At the end of the day, it's really all about me. Or how about this one? We let a busy agenda begin to run our day and we come across an opportunity to be intentional. And you know what? We say, you know what? I'm too busy. Uh, I'm too important to stop and do this. I, I need to get, I've got other things to do. Or maybe sometimes fear and worry creep into your life. And you begin to wonder or worry, if I was to be intentional, what would other people think? Would they, would they think I was some kind of a, you know, Jesus freak or would they make fun of me? And, and so all these things creep in. As, as I've been a Christian for many years, I've discovered that I am my worst enemy. You know, we love to point our fingers, don't we? We, we, we love to blame other people for our spiritual uh, issues or even Satan. Like, well, oh, you know, the devil's really bugging me today. But you know what? I've learned over the years that I am my biggest culprit. And, 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 and we have something called the flesh that even though we've been saved, we've accepted Christ as our Savior, the old man doesn't go away. And so we've got to deal with that old man, that flesh, daily in our lives. You know, the Apostle Paul uh, talked about how our flesh or, or our old man or our old self tends to get in the way of our obedience when we're attempting to being intentional for Jesus. Uh, look at Galatians 5.17. Paul writes this verse, For the desires of the flesh 
are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. Paul was saying that we have a, we have a spiritual tension in our life, right? The flesh against the spirit. The old man versus the new man. And daily, those two are button heads in our lives. And we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to help us keep our, our lives clean and clear. That gunk that clogs up our spiritual life. Just like your sink gets clogged up. We've got to be able to do that. Um, Jesus was at the height of his popularity in uh, Luke chapter 9. That's our verse today. We're going to be looking at three verses in Luke 9. Thousands of people were following Christ wherever he went. He, he, he couldn't get a, a moment to himself. He and his disciples were constantly traveling from town to town, village to village, ministering, healing, uh, doing miracles, all for the glory of God to show that Jesus was the Son of God. And, and, so, and so Christ... Um, was, was, was dealing with all these people that were coming and they, and, and they were following his every move. But you know, I would imagine the majority of these people that were following Jesus were not following him to worship him or to even admit that he was the son of God the way we should. I believe the, the majority of these people were following Christ because they had an agenda. What can Jesus do for me? Uh, what great miracle am I going to see next? Uh, what great teaching is he going to teach us from God's word? There was a consumer mentality with these people. And, 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 and I want to tell you something. Having a consumer mentality in spiritual things is dangerous. Because if we're not careful, we'll tend to, as leaders and ministers, we'll try to appease the crowd. Because we want them to what? We want them to come and hear the message that we have. And we've got to stick to our guns, right? We've got to continue to let people know that it takes a commitment, right? It, it takes obedience. It, it takes dying to yourself daily to follow Christ. Well, in Luke chapter 9, Jesus turned around one day and he faced uh, this, this army of his followers. And here's what he did. It's like he drew a line in the sand. And he, and he kind of laid the law down and he said these words in Luke 9, 20 through 25. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses or forfeits himself? Wow, it's almost like Jesus was trying to thin out the herd, so, so to speak, or, 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 or separate you know, the men from the boys. And, and see, Jesus wasn't concerned with building a crowd. Jesus wasn't concerned with being consumer friendly. Here's what Jesus was doing. He was calling them to true, righteous living. Let's look at the verse again, verse 23 in Luke 9. Jesus mentions three things in this verse. Very, very important for us to understand. The first thing he says to them is this. If you, if you want to come after me, if, if you really want to be a part of who I am, you've got to deny yourself. That means that you've got to get out of the driver's seat of your life. You've, let, you've got to let Christ be preeminent. You, you've got to let Jesus be the boss. You've got to let Jesus be in charge. Then the second thing he said is this. He said, you must take up your cross daily. A lot of people think that this means that God wants to give us some kind of a burden that we have to carry through life like a cross. But, if you've, but you've got to remember your history. The cross was, a, was an object of execution. And so if you were to take up your cross, that means that you're literally going to die. Well, in this case, I don't think Jesus was asking them to go die on a cross cross somewhere physically what was he saying he was saying I want you to pick up your cross spiritually and I want you to die to you I, I want you to submit to my plan and and my will 
every day. We, we, we've got to die to self daily, guys. If, 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 if we only die to self once or twice a year, we're never going to make it. Or just on Sundays as, as the preacher's preaching, right? No, we've got to, do, we, we've got to die daily to, to, to our life. And then he said, follow me. That simply means, what does my word say? Are you reading my word? Do as my word says, follow me. If I tell you to do something, follow me. Be obedient to Christ. Say what I would say, think what I would think, see what I would see. But then Jesus gets d deeper here. He not only lays out, uh, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, follow me. But then he goes deeper in verse 24 and he talks about uh, saving life and losing life. Uh, verse 24, he, he says something that's very counterculture uh, to the way that people live uh, in, in what I would call a humanistic lifestyle. It says in verse 24, he says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. That's where you place your needs, your wants, your desires above everything else in life. That what you want, what you desire, your dream, your goals, that is what you're going to base your life upon. And Jesus says when you do that, you're going to lose your life. But then Jesus comes back and he says, but whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. See, Jesus is calling us to be opposite of what the world says to do. Jesus is saying, your life, your desire, your need, your wants, give them up. Let me be the reason why you live. Give me your life. And when you do that, you're not going to lose your life, right? but you're going to save your life. You know, from the very beginning, the core of mankind has always been self-preservation. People uh, want to better themselves. Uh, they want to go and get what they want to get. They want to step on others to maybe get ahead. You know, you've heard that phrase, look out for number one, right? The thing that fuels that, besides being humanistic and lost from Christ, is the great lie, the subtle lie that Satan continues to whisper into this culture. And, and, and here's that lie by, by Satan. Satan says to us, you are basically good. There's really nothing wrong with you. In fact, you don't really need God that much. In fact, whatever seems right to you, do it. Sound familiar? <laughs> Watch the news for 10 minutes. People all over the world, all over the country are, are, are doing what they think is right in their eyes. And they're calling it good or they're calling it truth. It's a, it, it can be a subtle lie that Satan gives us. Now, from the beginning, on the other side of the coin, God's truth has always been this. God loves us. We know that man is sinful if you read scripture. So we must repent, we must worship God and obey Him and serve Him with all of our heart. Here's the great truth of God, that He loved us enough in our sin to send His only Son who never sinned to die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sin and then rise again the third day to conquer that sin and death. And I'm just going to tell you, in order to live or walk with Christ daily, we must lose ourselves. Uh, this is the great key to the Christian life. Um, losing ourselves is a daily process. Like I said, it doesn't just happen a few times a year at an event, a conference, or a camp. It must be a daily process where you say, God, today, when I get up, I'm going to give you my life. I'm losing myself. Hey, if you want to live intentionally for Christ, you must lose yourself. Now, you're saying, John, I hate losing, right? I don't like to lose in dominoes. I, I don't like to lose checkers, chess, uh, football games, tennis matches, baseball. I want to win. Hey, I'm just like you. I want to win too. Losing goes against my human nature. We all want to win because we're human. Hey, I don't even like losing anything in my house. If I lose my keys, lose my wallet, I lose my book, I lose my remote control, Man, I'll search heaven and earth until I find the things that I lost. 
My family makes fun of me. We went and we went to a hotel one time, checked in, and as we as we left, uh, we packed up our stuff and went down the highway. And we realized halfway down the road that my wife's necklace was missing, a very expensive necklace that I bought her for a present. And we left it back at the hotel, and it, it was too late to to go back and get it. And I learned my lesson. Every time we go to a hotel now, I call it the Dubois sweep. I get on my knees and I look under every crook and cranny, every, under the bed, every drawer. I, I sweep that whole room so with that we don't ever lose any, any, any valuables again. But when you and I lose ourselves, it simply means that we're putting ourselves to the side and we're allowing Christ to be out front. Hey, how do you lose yourself? It, it doesn't sound real fun, does it, as a Christian? Yeah, well, I'm supposed to lose myself because it doesn't sound like really what you want to do. But I'm telling you, it's what Christ is calling us to do. He says, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll save it. Well, I'm a Baptist preacher, right? And you know I've got four things to share here real quickly as I wind up this Bible study. So here we go. How do you lose yourself? In fact, I even made an acronym for you. L-O-S-E. Number one, if you want to lose yourself, L, love God. That's the first thing we've got to do if we're going to lose ourselves. We, we must have a definite love for God more than anything else in this world, including your, your wife or your husband, your children, your family, your football team, right? You must love God more than anybody else. And how do we love God? We love God by worshiping Him, not just on Sundays, but during the week, as you obey God, as you worship God, as you obey God, you're actually worshiping Him. But you also spend time with God, don't you? You get your copy of God's Word and you get together with Him in some room in your house or your apartment and you open up that scripture or you get on your phone and you read your phone like I do on my iPad and you let scripture fill your heart, right? When you spend time with God in Bible and, 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 and prayer, you're, you're, you're actually loving Him. But, but, but here's the key. Loving God creates the foundation for everything else you do as a Christian. Why are you in the choir? Because I love God. Why, why are you a greeter? Because I love God. Well, wh why, are you, why are you being made fun of and sharing your faith over here in the street? Because I love God. You see, loving God is the first step to losing yourself. Okay, First of all, L, love God. Number two, if you want to lose yourself, own your own faith. This is a concept that I discovered way back in the day when I was the college pastor here at Olive Baptist and I was teaching Crossroads weekly. And I, I tried to teach my students, hey, you guys are getting out of high school, you're in college now, you're coming to a crossroads. That's why we call it crossroads. You're coming to a crossroads in your life and you've got to make a decision about Jesus. You've got to own your own faith. But I don't care how old you are. You could be young, old, or middle-aged, or whatever you are. You must learn how to take responsibility for your faith. You know, living here in the South, it's so easy to come to church and tell people, well, you know, my grandpa was a Baptist minister. That's, that's really nice. But what about you? What do you believe? Well, you know, my mom and dad are Christians, so I, I guess I am one too because I come to church with them here every week. But you see, when you begin to own your own faith, you take responsibility for your faith. It's not your dad's faith. It's not your mom's faith, your grandpa's. It's your faith. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose again for you. Take your faith and begin to own it. You know the difference between a renter and an owner, right? If you rent a house... If something bad happens, what do you do? You call the landlord. They come and fix it and everything's cool. But what if you own the house? There's no landlord. You're the landlord. You've got to take responsibility for fixing that, that hot water heater that blew up in the garage. Or you've got to put down a new carpet in your house when the refrigerator flooded. Trust me, that's a personal story. I'll share with, share with you about that later down the road. So we're, we're, we're talking about four things to do to lose yourself. Number three. S, seek for ways to grow. And I'm talking about growing spiritually. Not, <laughs> not this kind of growth, right? But to grow in the Lord. Apathy is one of the greatest dangers that we face as Christians. We get a little bit comfortable. 
we kind of don't care as much. And you know what happens when you get apathetic? You begin to drift. Dr. Trailer has mentioned this many times over the years in his sermons because this convicted me. You, 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 what do you do? It's like a boat that's not tied up to the, to the harbor. You begin to drift. And before you know it, you wake up and you go, wow, how did I get here? You got there because you quit growing. And, 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 and we've got to develop a faith that's constantly what? Seeking ways to grow spiritually. I would, I would encourage you to begin to memorize scripture. Uh, you might be reading your Bible, you might be praying, and that's fantastic. But make sure you write things down, but make sure you're beginning to memorize Scripture. When you memorize Scripture, that helps you to grow and, and, and do things that, that, that are going to cause your faith to be stretched. Finally, if we're going to lose yourself, letter E, number four, engage the culture with the gospel. You've got to begin to love people not only in the church, but we've got to learn how to love the people outside the church. Yeah, non-Christians, <laughs> the unchurched, the heathen out there, right? We've got to love our neighbor. We've got to love our, uh, the people that we work with, the people that we go to school with. Because why? Because Christ died for them and he rose again for them. So what does it mean to engage the culture? It means to build a relational bridge. Don't just walk up to somebody and cold cock it with the gospel if you don't even know them. Ask the Lord to open up an opportunity, build a relationship, build trust. Look for ways that you can meet their needs. Look for opportunities to share Christ. I just encourage you today to begin to think about that intentional Christian living. And a big part of it is you either being committed or not committed. So get out of the way. Allow yourself to lose yourself daily and trust Christ. Take up that cross daily Say, Lord, I'm denying myself and I want to follow you no matter what. I'm going to pray. And if you'd like to join me, you, you ask God to give you the desire and, and the ability to lose yourself even right now as we're praying. Say, God, I just simply want to get out of the way and I want you to lead me today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this scripture. And not only uh, Luke chapter 9, but Galatians that tells us that we have a choice to make daily. We can either try to save our lives, God, or we can lose our lives. And Father, you're calling us to lose ourselves daily. Lose ourselves. That's the theme of our Bible study today. So Lord, help us to be that intentional Christian that's loving you, that's owning our faith, that's seeking ways to grow, and we're engaging the culture with the gospel. Father, give us the power today to do that in the name of Jesus. And we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm excited about being here and talking with you and sharing my heart with you through God's word. Uh, continue to pray for me as I, as I share and uh, looking forward to see you the next time we get together. Have a great day.